Hi, and welcome to a uh, celebration on this, the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. On behalf of myself, Father Alec, and indeed all those responsible for putting together our liturgy, can I wish you a very restful weekend. Wherever kindness and compassion are to be found, there too is the face of God. As the church, we do not hold a monopoly of such God-given gifts. Instead, we rejoice in and even learn from all those who manifest God's presence in this way. Yep. Hi, my name is Jacinta and I'm from St. Gregory's Parish. I read from the Book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud. He spoke with Moses, but took some of the spirit that was on him and put it in the seventy elders. When the spirit came on them, they prophesied, but not again. Two men had stayed back in the camp. One was called Eldad, and the other Medad. The spirit came down on them, though they had not gone to the tent. Their names were enrolled amongst the rest. These began to prophesy in the camp. The young man ran to tell this to Moses. Look, he said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Then he said to Joshua, the son of Nun, who had served Moses from his youth, My Lord Moses, stop them. Moses answered, Are you jealous on my account? If only the whole people of the Lord were prophets, and the Lord gave his spirit to them all. This is the word of the Lord.
Hello, I'm Suzanne from St John Vianney's Parish. A reading from the letter of St James. An answer for the rich. Start crying, weep for the miseries that are coming to you. Your wealth is all rotting, your clothes are all eaten up by moths. All your gold and your silver are corroding away and the same corrosion will be in your own sentence and eat into your body. It was a burning fire that you stored up as your treasure for the last days. Labourers moored your fields and you cheated them. Listen to the wages that you kept back, calling out. Realise that the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. On earth you have had a life of comfort and luxury. In the time of slaughter you went on eating to your heart's content. It was you who condemned the innocent and killed them. They offered you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. Hello, my name is Peter and I'm from St. Catherine's Parish. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. John said to Jesus, Master, we saw a man who is not one of us, casting out devils in your name. And because he is not one of us, we tried to stop him. But Jesus said, you must not stop him. No one who works a miracle in my name is likely to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. If anyone gives you a cup of water to drink, just because you belong to Christ, then I tell you solemnly, he will most certainly not lose his reward. But anyone who is an obstacle to bring down one of these little ones who have faith would be better thrown into the sea with a great millstone around his neck. And if your hand should cause you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life crippled than to have two hands and go to hell in the fire that cannot be put out. And if your foot should cause you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life lame than to have two feet and be thrown to hell. And if your eye should cause you to sin, tear it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm does not die, nor the fire go out. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The apostles were anything but pleased when they witnessed an outsider casting out demons in the name of Jesus. They resented his intrusion, were jealous, and left threatened because he was doing their work and yet was not part of their group. He had no right to be using the name of the Saviour. So John made a complaint in the hope of having him unlicensed. This unlicensed, I'll start again. The apostles were anything but pleased when they witnessed an outsider casting out demons in the name of Jesus. They resented his intrusion, were jealous and felt threatened because he was doing their work and yet was not part of their group. He had no right to be using the name of the Saviour. So John made a complaint in the hope of having this unlicensed preacher silenced. John must have been surprised that Jesus refused to stop the man from doing good work in his name. Jesus made it clear that all good comes from God, the Father, and that doing charitable work was not the exclusive right of his followers. God moves where he wills and chooses whom he wills. His spirit is at work beyond the confines of established religion. With the best will in the world, we can all fall prey to that type of thinking and misguided notion that only the church can contain truth 
and only its members can perform spiritual works. It's a temptation we all have. When we think along these lines, we're inclined to turn the church in on herself and deny the great works, that great works can be achieved outside her influence. We forget that an action can be good and godly without being performed by a Christian. Goodness in the world comes from God and not from men. Even within the church, there is the temptation to form our own select groupings, to promote the club mentality, which is basically about being in and keeping other people out. We've all witnessed unhealthy the rivalry between different church organisations, different parishes, and yet the aim of all is about furthering the kingdom of God. Charitable organisations with the same objective for alleviating poverty or helping senior citizens can be at loggerheads with one another about who is to collect, <clears throat> where to collect and when to collect. Their cause is very worthwhile, but their tactics can sometimes be anything but edifying, given the impression that goodness is a closed shop in their name and not in the name of Christ. The gospel tells us that any person of goodwill doing their best to follow Christ's footsteps graces the world. Every good deed contributes towards the battle against evil, so downgrading the motives behind someone's charitable gestures amounts to spiritual begrudgery. God's action is not limited to any class of people. He may be sending his message to us in the most unexpected and tragic events that befall us. Goodness is where we find it. Hello, my name is Monica and I'm from St. Catharines in the Cluster. Our prayers of intercession. In today's readings, we are urged to praise God for all his prophets, men and women of every nation and creed who have resisted evil and manifest the spirit in their lives. In this final week of the season of creation, let us pray for Pope Francis and all our contemporary prophets who are challenging us to hear the cry of the poor and the cry of the earth to act on climate change, to live simply and show real respect for the whole of God's creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for governments and leaders in authority that they make wise and informed decisions in their plans for tackling COVID this winter. May all nations recognise the unity of the human family and grant that they work together generously and compassionately to reduce inequalities across the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we will be blessed with holy anger at injustice, abuse of power and greed in the world. Let us find courage to change our own lifestyles and also influence others to reduce, recycle and renew the earth's natural resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As food supply disruptions result in rising costs and prices, let us remember those who are hungry, living on reduced incomes and struggling to feed their families. Let us respond to the hidden poverty in our faith communities by donating what we can to our cluster food banks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and housebound, may the Holy Spirit infuse them with love, comfort and hope for better days ahead. We particularly remember all those whom the Prayer Foundation hold firm in their weekly prayers. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they experience the peace and joy of God's presence in his kingdom. For those left to mourn them, may they be comforted by our faith communities. We remember especially. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May God free you from all your sins and lift you up with the gift of the Spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.